I decided to work and stay in Osaka for a few weeks at the end of last year. And while I was there, I cycled almost everywhere I needed to go to since Osaka is quite a small city. Cycling is one of the best ways to explore a city past the touristy areas, so in this video, I'll show you the route I did to visit some of my favorite, lesser known areas in Osaka. I'll also show you some mom and pop stores, trendy hip cafe areas, and cool izakayas and bars you can go check out at night. Good morning, so this is the hotel I stayed at near Koreantown and that's where we're going to start off the day. Koreantown in Osaka is pretty impressive. It reminds me of the markets in Korea. There are all these small vendors selling street food everywhere you go. So if you love Korean food, this is heaven. A lot of the stores have been here since the end of the Second World War and the people who live around this area are mostly of Korean descent so you'll hear a lot of Korean being spoken around. As for food, they sell pretty similar things at most of the shops so I recommend to go to one where something catches your eye. <laughs> Next, it's time to pick up our bikes. There are a lot of bike sharing companies in Japan now where you reserve a bike near you on an app and return it at another port. I'll put some of my favorite ones down below in the description box. And you have a place to put your phone so you can check the map here. So we're gonna start the bike ride off at Korean Town in Surahashi Station and then we're gonna ride up past the local shopping streets until we hit Osaka Castle. Oh, my footage is gonna be so shaky! I decided to stop by this local takoyaki shop because the takoyaki smelled so good when I rode past. And look at the crazy prices here. You can get four takoyaki for less than a dollar. Takoyaki sold at the tourist areas are pretty overpriced, so locals usually buy them at the small stores in their neighborhood. There's plenty of these small little stores all around Osaka selling takoyaki, okonomiyaki, and yakisoba. So if you come to Osaka, try to find these small stores near the Airbnb or hotel you're staying in. In Japan, you can ride on the bike lanes on the road or the pedestrian footpath. There's really no strict rules, so just ride where you feel more comfortable and confident in riding. Oh my god, these Japanese kids are so cute with their little hats, matching hats. So pretty. Smile for the camera. Osaka Castle right there. I would definitely recommend cycling through Osaka Castle. It was so beautiful. If you go in spring, you get to see cherry blossoms. And if you go in autumn, like we did at the end of November, you get to see the autumn foliage. Next, we cycled along the river to Nakanoshima Park. Nakanoshima Park is a waterfront park nested between two rivers. It's a great place to come to enjoy nature in the city and to see the park's beautiful rose garden. I came here a couple of times during my long stay in Osaka to have picnics with my friends or just to chill by the river and read a book. I love the contrast of the park and the tall buildings in the background. Nearby the park towards the station, there's also a strip of cafe situated by the river. I like to come here for lunch or coffee with my friends since there are a lot of cafes here with outdoor seats facing the river. 
I decided to try a new cafe on this street. I love trying new places whenever I go out. However, sometimes it can be a miss, which is also okay, so you know not to go back again. This restaurant here was just okay. The curry was a bit overpriced and they didn't have an outdoor seating area by the river, but it's still nice to just try it out once. Next, we took a stroll up north to the longest shopping street in Japan. The shopping street is said to be around 2.6 km, so that would roughly take you around 40 minutes to walk its length. That's a lot of shops to look at. But the main place I wanted to go to was around Tenma Station. Tenma is a fun, lively place to come at night for restaurant or bar hopping. There are lots of tiny bars and restaurants every corner you turn, so just find one that looks appetizing to you. A few of you who were living in and around Osaka reached out to me on Instagram, so we decided to meet up for dinner. Thank you guys for coming! Come back. Happy Friday! We had such a great night, hopped around 3-4 to four restaurants, ate lots of little nibbles, and this is probably one of my favourite places in Osaka to go out with friends, especially on a Friday or Saturday night. It says, don't throw up here, don't drink until you throw up. It's troublesome. A lot of people must throw up here. In this pretty area. Last but not least, I wanted to show you the hotel I stayed at near Korean Town. It felt more like an apartment, so it was definitely much cozier staying here long term. So you've got the kitchen here, you've got the fridge and microwave over there. They also have everything you need, like pots and pans, dishes, utensils. So let me show you guys the room. It's so big. It's got four beds, so it's great if you come here with friends or family. And there's a little closet over there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tag me on Instagram if you visit any of the places I mentioned. I love to see your adventures too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.